If you haven't watched my previous videos on pointers versus values, I recommend that you watch them first, as this video builds on them. While microbenchmarks can be interesting, they can also be misleading, especially when they measure an operation without consideration for what might happen later in the code. Improving the speed by 10 milliseconds on one operation might slow down future operations by 20 milliseconds, for example, leading to an overall slowdown. To really understand whether pointers or values are more performant, we have to look at what's done with the data. Have a look at this incredibly simple case. We have two functions that increment an integer. One that accepts a value and returns the incremented value, and another that accepts a pointer and increments the value in place. These tests are basically useless, though, because the compiler optimizes both of them to essentially the same code, which runs so fast that it can't be reliably timed. If I tell the compiler that the function is more complicated than it really is by using the no inline directive, we get results that seem equally uninteresting, but are actually quite educational. See, it's not actually possible to pass data without copying something. There's an illusion that when passing a pointer, no data is being copied. However, the pointer itself is a 64-bit integer referencing a location in memory. So those 64 bits need to be copied anytime you pass a pointer. Since an int is also 64 bits, the performance of passing an integer value is going to be identical to that of passing a pointer. What happens if we pass something bigger? Let's pull out big struct from my previous videos and use that instead. Here we see that passing a pointer has a speed advantage, since the pointer only copies 64 bits, but copying the entire structure copies 896 bits. The speed difference is between 23 and 54 nanoseconds, depending on what optimizations the compiler is able to use. But since my previous video showed that creating a pointer is usually slower, I need to determine the overall comparison. First off, I'm not even going to write a benchmark that tests the use of a pointer that can be guaranteed to stay on the stack. With what we've seen so far, it's obvious that this will be the fastest. The challenge is guaranteeing that the pointer will always be allocated to the stack. So if we compare value operations to pointers allocated to the heap, we see that the pointer has a clear speed advantage in all cases. If only I could combine the performance advantage of creating a value with the performance advantage of passing a pointer. Oh wait, I can. See, there's no reason I can't create the data as a value type, then pass a reference to the functions. In benchmarks, this is faster even with complex functions that can't be inlined, and inlineable functions optimize away to essentially nothing. Now there is a caveat here. Value types are not guaranteed to be stack allocated. The most obvious example would be something like this. Even though the data appears to be allocated in the stack, the compiler will be forced to put it on the heap so that it can safely return it. So what's my recommendation? My recommendation is to write code so the intent is clear and let the compiler worry about performance. Only tweak the code for performance when you have clear evidence to justify it. And this is what I've been suggesting since I started these pointer versus value videos. But let me go a little bit further and show some specific examples of what I mean. In the simplest case, there's never really a need to pass a single value as a pointer. And my tests show that the performance is identical in all cases. So use whichever of these most clearly describes what the code is doing. Looking at these two average functions, which one is simpler to use? Because there's no difference in the speed. Here is a case that goes the opposite direction. If I allow the compiler to optimize with inlining, all four compile to the same code that's too fast to reliably measure. But if I simulate that the functions are more complex, we see that moving a value around is about five times slower, which is fine because the syntax is the least idiomatic and outright clunky in my opinion. The final version is probably the most idiomatic and it's tied for fastest. Let's follow that thread. Which of these do you feel is more idiomatic? Personally, I would argue that either is acceptable. I broke this down into four scenarios. You can see the categories here. From a performance perspective, returning a pointer is about twice as fast in two of the four scenarios, but about five times slower in two of the four scenarios. As discussed previously, if you're certain that the pointer will be stack allocated, then returning a pointer is faster. It's easy to prove the nature of the allocation in simple examples like this, but if your use case is more complex or you're not sure exactly how the data will be used, it can be difficult to be sure. In such cases, returning a value is a more reliable method of achieving good performance, even if it's not guaranteed to provide the best performance in all cases. 
In the end, the evidence seems to suggest that it's not a good idea to assume that pointers will improve performance. Certainly, if you can prove it with benchmarks, then you should go that route. But if you're just following a rule of thumb for everyday coding, your best bet is to make the code easy for programmers to reason about and trust the compiler to optimize it.